Even though Pringles has a peculiarity to it, its production process is similar to that of other stackable chips. Rather than being produced by frying fresh potatoes, they are produced by frying a dough mix made out of potato starch and water. Potato starch is a white powder produced when starch, extracted from potato tubers, is completely dried up. To make this powder, raw potatoes are crushed, resulting in starch grains and damaged potato cells. The starch is separated, crushed, left to dry, and at the end of the day, it forms a white powder. Potato starch is gluten-free, which makes it a healthy substitute for regular flour in many cooking processed foods. The potato starch is shipped off in bags to the potato crisp companies, and a factory worker begins the process of mixing the dough. At first, the potato starch is mixed with water in a ratio of one-third of water to two-thirds of potato starch. And since the water content is small, the resulting mixture isn't as sticky as regular dough. Once that ratio has been satisfied, small quantities of cornstarch and oil are added to the mix, which is then thoroughly stirred in the mixer. Since potato starch is flavorless, the Pringles company adds a special secret ingredient into the dough mixture, and this gives the potato flavor that is so evident in each chip. From the mixer, the mix is delivered to a moving conveyor, which in turn delivers it to an auger. This auger disperses the dough, making it look something like moist powder, before delivering it to another moving conveyor. This conveyor carries the scattered dough to the next phase of production, where it's made into thin, long potato sheets. This is done by mechanical rollers, which apply about two tons of pressure to the dough as it moves on the conveyor down below. This process lasts just a few seconds before the conveyor transports the flat potato sheet to the next stop, which is rotary cutters. Just like with the rollers, these cutters also roll on the potato sheet, except they consist of several oval-shaped cutters, which cut the flat sheet into hundreds upon hundreds of oval-shaped flattened doughs. As the conveyor carrying the pre-cut dough moves away from the cutter, another device pulls off the scrap dough left from the cutting, and this scrap is recycled and flattened again with a new batch of uncut potato sheets. And this process goes on and on, for the already cut pieces, they travel on another steel conveyor into the fryer, where they are fried at a high temperature. At the fryer, there are giant curved molds, which roll on the cut pieces as soon as they enter the fryer. The pressure from this mold creates the inward depression that makes the chips stackable. The chips pass through the hot oil for just 11 seconds, and they come out very crispy, but until now, they are still bare and unflavored. Next, the chips are passed through a blower to drain the excess oil, and afterward, they pass through a machine which coats them with seasoning. A set number of fried chips are passed through different coating stations, since different flavors of chips are being produced at the same time. After being coated, the chips are mechanically flipped to another conveyor, changing their orientation. As a result of this flip, the chips are now arranged in neat piles and in several long rows. A factory worker inspects these rows, looks out for incorrectly positioned chips, and realigns them in preparation for the next phase, which is the packaging. Just before they are packaged, the chips are moved to a vibrating conveyor, and the movement helps to loosen up the pile of chips, making them easier to package. This vibration conveyor takes the chips to a scale, which weighs the right amount of chips that should be in each box or bag, depending on the company's packaging. As the scales sort out the chips into portions, another machine, which acts as an automatic spoon, scoops each portion chip into the designed container for the chips, whether box or bag. Mechanical fingers nudge the packaging to ensure the chips stay in the right position. Next, another machine seals the package, and chips of the same flavor are packaged together and placed in a box. These boxes are taken to the warehouse, and from there, they are shipped to retailers across the world.